Welcome everyone to this introduction to antenna theory presentation. Antennas are fundamental components in the realm of wireless communication. They act as transducers, converting electrical signals into electromagnetic waves during transmission and performing the reverse during reception. For amateur radio enthusiasts, commonly known as hams, a deep understanding of antenna theory is critical. This knowledge enables operators to optimize their equipment, ensuring clear and reliable communications over various distances, whether it's local chat or a conversation spanning the continents. Want to take your amateur radio experience to the next level? Join the American Radio Relay League. As a member, you'll gain access to a wealth of resources like the ARRL Learning Center, where you can build your knowledge, earn certificates, and upgrade your license. You'll also receive four exclusive digital magazines, including QST and On the Air, to keep you up to date on the latest ham radio news, techniques, and stories. We're also your voice in Washington, D.C., fighting to protect our valuable amateur radio spectrum and services. Looking to make a difference? The ARRL connects you with public service opportunities so you can help your community when it matters most. Don't wait. Visit ARRL.org slash join and become part of the ARRL community today. And right now, use code APE1 with a standard one-year or three-year membership to get this hydration sling bag, perfect for carrying your gear, absolutely free. At their core, antennas are designed to either emit or receive electromagnetic waves. When transmitting, an antenna is energized by an alternating current, causing it to radiate energy outward. During reception, the antenna intercepts electromagnetic waves, inducing a small alternating current that can be processed by the receiver. The concept of resonance is pivotal. An antenna tuned to a specific frequency will operate more efficiently, ensuring optimal performance in both transmitting and receiving signals. There are several different key types of antennas used in radio communications. The dipole antenna is one of the most fundamental, consisting of a conductor split in the middle, commonly a half wavelength long, radiating broadside. The quarter wave vertical antenna is ideal for space efficiency and often uses a ground plane to enhance performance. Loop antennas, including full wave and magnetic loops, provide efficient signal reception with reduced noise. Finally, the Yagi antenna is a powerful directional design that utilizes multiple elements to concentrate signals commonly used for long distance communication. Antenna theory is deeply rooted in electromagnetic theory, specifically Maxwell's equations, which describe how electric and magnetic fields interact. These equations show that changing electric fields produce magnetic fields, and vice versa, leading to the propagation of electromagnetic waves. The behavior of these waves varies depending upon the region. The near field is dominated by complex wave interactions, while the far field consists of stable electromagnetic waves that propagate through space. Understanding these principles is essential for designing efficient antennas for various applications. Understanding key parameters in antenna theory is essential for optimizing performance. The resonant frequency is where an antenna operates most efficiently, often a half wave of the operating signal. Impedance matching and standing wave ratio determine how well the antenna transfers power. Ideal conditions result in an SWR close to 1 to 1. Gain in directivity define how much and where energy is radiated. High gain antennas focus energy in a particular direction for better reception. Finally, polarization, horizontal, vertical, or circular, plays a critical role in ensuring signals are received properly and efficiently. Resonance is a fundamental concept in antenna design, referring to the frequency at which an antenna operates most efficiently. At this resonant frequency, the antenna's reactance cancels out, leaving only resistive impedance, which ensures maximum power transfer. Properly tuning an antenna to its resonance reduces the standing wave ratio, minimizing power loss and improving overall performance. This principle is essential for both transmitting and receiving antennas in any communication system. Standing wave ratio, or SWR, is a critical metric in antenna systems, indicating how well power is transferred from the transmitter to the antenna. An ideal SWR of 1 to 1 means that all transmitted power is radiated with no reflections. However, high SWR values, such as 3 to 1 or higher, 
cause significant power to be reflected back towards the transmitter, leading to inefficiency, potential damage to components, and degraded signal quality. Proper impedance matching using tuners or matching networks ensures efficiency energy transfer and optimal antenna performance. Antenna radiation patterns provide a visual representation of how an antenna radiates energy. The azimuth plot shows horizontal radiation patterns, while the elevation plot illustrates vertical propagation. Beam width defines the spread of the main lobe, which is critical in determining signal coverage. A narrow beam width increases directivity, focusing energy more efficiently. Side and rear lobes represent energy loss in unintended directions. Understanding these patterns helps in optimizing antenna placement and improving signal efficiency. Most antenna patterns consist of a main lobe, which is the direction where the majority of the radiated energy is concentrated. Side lobes, while smaller, can introduce unwanted interference and should be minimized in directional antennas. The half power beam width is a key parameter representing the angular width where the radiation intensity drops to 50% of its peak. In directional antennas like Yagi's, understanding and controlling these lobes helps optimize antenna positioning, reduces noise, and maximizes signal strength in the desired direction. Efficient antenna performance depends on proper feeding and impedance matching. Transmission lines such as coaxial cables and open wire feed lines carry RF signals between the radio and antenna. However, impedance mismatches can lead to power loss, high SWR, and reducing efficiency. Matching networks such as antenna tuners and balance adjust the impedance to maximize power transfer and protect equipment. Choosing the right transmission line and minimizing losses are critical for maintaining integrity and system efficiency. Antenna tuners, or ATUs, are essential in ham radio for ensuring efficient power transfer between the transceiver and the antenna. Without proper impedance matching, significant power losses occur, reducing the effectiveness of transmissions. The key function of an ATU is to minimize standing wave ratio, or SWR. A high SWR can lead to power reflections, causing inefficiencies and even damage to equipment over time. The tuner acts as a bridge, making sure the transceiver sees a suitable impedance. A common misconception is that an ATU physically alters the characteristics of an antenna. Instead, it simply adjusts the impedance at the connection point, ensuring the system operates effectively. Coaxial cable is a widely used transmission line in antenna systems. Designed to carry RF signals with minimal loss and interference, it consists of a central conductor surrounded by an insulating layer, shielding to prevent external noise, and an outer protective jacket. Coaxial cables are popular due to their good shielding properties, ease of installation, and compatibility with most transceivers. However, different types of coaxial cable offer varying levels of loss and power handling, making this selection critical for performance. A balanced feeder is a type of transmission line that consists of two parallel conductors carrying equal but opposite signals. This design minimizes radiation losses and provides high efficiency, making it ideal for long-distance HF transmissions. Unlike coaxial cable, balance feeders are less affected by impedance mismatches, reducing loss and improving power transfer. Open wire ladder line and twin line are common types of balance feeders, often used in dipole and multiband antenna systems. Antenna bandwidth and efficiency are key performance metrics. Bandwidth refers to the range of frequencies over which an antenna operates effectively without excessive signal degradation. Efficiency measures how much input power is converted into radiated energy, rather than lost as heat or reflections. There are often trade-offs between these factors. Broadband antennas tend to have lower efficiency, while highly efficient antennas typically operate within a narrow frequency range. Understanding these characteristics helps in selecting the right antenna for specific applications. The Q factor, or quality factor, of an antenna describes how well it stores and radiates energy at its resonant frequency. A high Q antenna has a very sharp resonance, meaning it effectively radiates energy but operates over a narrow frequency range. These antennas are ideal for applications requiring high selectivity. Conversely, low Q antennas have a broader frequency range but tend to be less efficient. Understanding the trade-offs between Q factor, bandwidth, and efficiency is essential for selecting the right antenna for your specific application. Radiation resistance is a key parameter in antenna design representing the resistance component responsible for the actual signal radiation. A higher radiation resistance generally leads to better efficiency as more power is radiated instead of being lost as heat and resistive elements. 
Factors such as antenna length, shape, and proximity to conductive surfaces can influence radiation resistance. Understanding and optimizing this parameter is essential for improving antenna performance and signal strength. Polarization is a key factor in antenna performance, referring to the orientation of the electrical field of a transmitted wave. The most common types are horizontal, vertical, and circular, and elliptical polarization. HF antennas like dipoles are typically horizontally polarized, while VHF and UHF antennas, including those for handheld transceivers and repeaters, are often using vertical polarization. Matching the polarization of the transmitter and receiver minimizes signal loss. However, in real-world environments, multipath reflections can sometimes mitigate mismatched polarization losses. Common mode current occurs when RF energy flows on the outer surface of the coaxial cable shield, creating an unintended radiation and interference. This can lead to distortion, noise in receivers, and unwanted coupling with nearby electronic devices. The best way to help mitigate common mode current is by using balloons or chokes, which help suppress unwanted currents and ensure that the antenna system operates as intended. Proper grounding and cable management further reduce interference and improve overall system performance. Balance and choke play an essential role in antenna systems by managing RF currents and reducing interference. A balance, balanced to unbalanced transformer, is commonly used with dipole antennas to transition between the balanced antenna elements and the unbalanced coaxial feed line. Without a balance, unwanted common mode currents may flow in the coax shield, leading to signal distortion and radiation pattern alterations. Chokes, often made from coiled coax or ferrite beads, further suppress unwanted RF currents, ensuring cleaner transmission and reception. Antenna placement is a critical factor in amateur radio operation. Elevating an antenna improves signal range while avoiding obstructions and minimizes interference. Ground effects play a key role in vertical antenna performance. Good soil conductivity enhances efficiency, while poor grounding can introduce signal losses. Balance and chokes are essential in many antenna designs to prevent unwanted RF currents from affecting performance. Proper installation and placement can greatly enhance communications reliability. Antenna placement and height play a role in signal propagation. Ele elevating an antenna improves its reach, especially for VHF and UHF signals that rely on line of sight communications. HF antennas, on the other hand, use ionospheric reflection, where height affects the takeoff angle of signals. Environmental factors such as buildings, trees, and nearby structures can introduce interference, making careful placement essential for optimizing performance. Choosing the right height and location enhances signal clarity and overall efficiency. Ground effects significantly impact vertical antenna performance. Soil conductivity influences how efficiently antennas radiate signals, with highly conductive ground improving efficiency. Ground radials, which are radial wires extending from the antenna base, provide a low resistance return path for RF currents, reducing energy loss. Elevated radials can perform well with fewer wires, while buried radials require a larger number to achieve similar efficiency. Proper grounding and radial installation are important for maximizing antenna effectiveness. Loading coils are used in antenna systems to electrically lengthen shortened antennas, allowing it to resonate at a lower frequency without requiring a physically longer structure. This is especially useful in mobile and HF applications where space constraints limit full-sized antennas. While loading coils improve resonance, they can introduce losses and reduce bandwidth. Proper coil placement and design help balance performance and efficiency, making them essential for compact antenna solutions. Capacitance hats are top loading structures used to electrically lengthen shortened antennas, improving their efficiency without requiring additional physical length. This technique is especially beneficial in vertical antennas operating on low frequencies, where achieving full-size dimensions is impractical. Capacitance hats increase radiation resistance and reduce ground losses. They also add mechanical complexity and wind loading. Proper design balances these factors for optimal performance. Safety is an important aspect of antenna installation and operation. RF exposure regulations ensure that electromagnetic fields remain within safe limits to protect human health. Structural safety is also vital, as antennas must be securely installed to withstand wind, ice, and other environmental factors. Additionally, electrical protection measures like grounding and lightning arresters help prevent damage to equipment and reduce the risk of electrical hazards. Following these guidelines ensures both regulatory compliance and operational safety. Antenna modeling and experimentation are important for designing effective communication systems. 
Modern software tools like EasyNEC and 4NEC2 allow amateurs and engineers to simulate radiation patterns, impedance matching, and efficiency before building physical antennas. Prototyping with common materials helps validate these models. And real-world testing with SWR meters or antenna analyzers ensure performance aligns with expectations. Iterative tuning and adjustments refine the design, leading to a highly optimized antenna system. Antenna theory is fundamental to efficient radio communication. By understanding concepts such as resonance, impedance matching, gain, polarization, and radiation patterns, operators can design and optimize antennas maximized for performance. Experimentation, modeling, and real-world testing are critical in refining designs and overcoming challenges. As technology evolves, continuous learning remains essential to staying ahead in antenna design and application. Whether for amateur radio, commercial systems, or research, mastering antenna principles opens the door to reliable and far-reaching communication.